All right, now welcome back for part two. So let's label it accordingly, part two. And we're using the same A, B, C, and D that you guys had from part one, so no, no, no need to specify that. We'll label this 2A, and let's go ahead and read the instructions and jump into the assignment. Hopefully everyone's having a happy Thanksgiving. So let's see. Uh, where are our instructions? Here we go. 2A. So consider the multivariable function given below that models the path of fluid flow for some water fountain. Plot this function using MATLAB figure 2. MATLAB. Uh, and it says call it figure 2. Oh yes, because figure one was in part one and compute its gradient in two dimensions and call this P2AG2 and, and then it says next to find another function G. So I'm gonna do the first part. So let's go ahead and first, we gotta define our function here. And so it's this ugly F, right, F function. Let me scroll over here and I'll kind of be quick, but feel free to watch the video many times in order to get the code, right? F is equal to A plus 10 uh, we're going to say minus, in parenthesis, 1 divided by, in parenthesis, parenthesis, uh, b plus 1 times x squared plus y squared. And we have 1, 2, 3, minus, parenthesis, parenthesis, c plus 1, outside parenthesis, times, x squared plus y squared. And we'll do a semicolon, we'll control save, we'll make sure our syntax is right by running it. Awesome, and all we need to do is make a figure for this. So we'll call this figure two, and we're just gonna say f surf of f. Control save, uh, and maybe we'll put a z limit. Let's do z lim of zero to inf for infinity. I think that should be fine. Control save. And we can run it. Awesome, so we do have our figure two, it's all good. Now I think it just wants us to do a two dimensional gradient. So P2A G2 is equal to the gradient of F of X comma Y. Control save, we will run it. And we should have something over there that looks like a gradient. Let's go ahead, we'll output it just so we can see it for a second. Okay, so it does output correctly, perfect. Okay, so you guys are responsible for the rest of this problem in which you need to go define g, which will be equal to some function, and then you need to define P2 uh, AG3, right? And this is gonna be equal to the gradient of the above function G and make sure you have the right amount of var variables here. So I'll leave that there. We'll control save it just so it's in the comments and we'll go to 2B. Now you'll notice for 2B and 2C, so I'm, let me go over to the instructions here. Hopefully I'm up on your end. 2B says to construct the first degree ta Taylor polynomial, and 2C says to construct the second degree Taylor polynomial. So I'm gonna go through 2B all the way, and then you will be responsible for 2C. Sound good? Awesome. Okay, let's go ahead, and we'll pull up in this, 2B. And let me double check something really quick. I think, and X naught and Y naught are equal to each other, right? So. Hopefully we see that, uh, let's see, there we go. So for a first degree Taylor polynomial, we need F sub X, and I'm just gonna label all my variables that I need first. I need F sub Y, and then I need my X naught and my Y naught. So F sub X, derivative of F with respect to X, F sub Y, derivative of f with respect to y, and we have an ugly x naught, y naught, but at least they're equal to each other. So it looks like x naught is gonna be four times, in parentheses, b plus one, uh, times c plus one, ooh, let's get some right parentheses here, 
all raised to the ugly negative 0 0.25. And we'll put a semicolon, we'll control save, we're gonna copy this piece of code because x naught and y naught are exactly equivalent here. If you're wondering why, this is all just coming straight from the instructions. And we should be good, control save, we'll run it, make sure everything runs appropriately, no syntax errors. And we are good, figure two, figure one. Okay, so now it wants us to take this and we need to construct the first degree Taylor polynomial by doing P2B and we need to use the subs command. So we're gonna do subs, we're gonna input our function. We wanna replace our typical X and Y and we wanna replace them with our X naught and Y naught. All right, so that's our first part. Now we need to do plus. We essentially need to repeat what we just did. So I'm gonna copy and paste again to save us time. Instead of f though, we're gonna use f sub x, right? Same thing, and we also need this extra piece times x minus x naught. And we need to do the same thing for f sub y. So we're just gonna copy this now keep saving ourselves some time here. This is now f sub y instead, and this is now gonna be y minus y naught, semicolon, control save, right? So this is our first degree Taylor polynomial. You can run it, make sure we don't have any syntax errors. I don't believe we should. Last part we need to do is f surf of p to b, uh, but we do need to use the hold on command so it still ends up on figure two, right? So we'll say hold on, don't go anywhere, f surf of p to b, control save, and let's make sure this looks right. And we'll know that it's right by our figure two, perfect. Okay, so that is 2c, or 2b. You guys are responsible for 2c, but it's the same idea, except it's just gonna be a, a second degree, right? So go through that one, um, I will mention for 2D, I'll start it. Um, I'll start the beginning of it and I'll let you guys finish the rest. I think there was a little bit of confusion on how to switch from, let's say a rectangular function, even though there's not X, Y's and Z's, over to a different type of function. Um, and it's still the same as if you can kind of pretend there are X, Y's and Z's there. So let's go ahead and read uh, 2D here. So 2D, find the volume underneath the radial fluid flow arc defined by the function F and above the xy plane, but restricted to the domain between the circles of radius r in and r out. So because it's a radius, right, we're looking at polar coordinates. So this is a double integral because we're using that z value of f, right? So what we need to do is switch over from x's and y's over to r cosine of theta and r sine of theta, right? So that's the first thing we need to do. So again, if you're wondering where this is coming from, it's coming from uh, it's coming from the instructions. I know I'm going through it quickly, so feel free to watch the video as many times as possible. Now I'm gonna define g here to be a function, but I'm gonna take my function f, right? So again, I'm switching from rectangular into polar, and I wanna switch my x's and y's. And what do I wanna switch them with? Well, r times cosine of theta, and I wanna switch it with r times sine of theta, right? So that's how we switch from rectangular to polar, even though, right, it's not defined in our actual function f. So hopefully this helps with 1D if you were stuck on, stuck on 1D. Uh, we need to define our R1 and our R2, and these are ugly, ugly, but uh, R2 and R1 are very similar, just one sign. So if we do one of them, we'll be good for the other one. So let's say R1 is equal to the square root parenthesis, parenthesis, a plus 10, and again, you might have to watch this a couple times because I'm gonna go fairly quickly, divided by parenthesis two times, parenthesis c plus one, uh, outside one, outside two, let's say minus square root, parenthesis, 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 a plus 10, outside one, squared, uh, outside another one times b plus one outside minus four times parenthesis c plus one 
outside one, outside another one, divided by, we have two times, parenthesis, c plus one, outside one, times square root of b plus one. And I think, let's see, I'm missing one parenthesis somewhere. Maybe you guys already spotted it. So we have square root, let's see the very beginning. Square root, double parenthesis, a plus 10, divided by two times c plus one, that's fine. Double parenthesis minus square root, parenthesis, 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 a plus 10, squared outside parenthesis times b plus one minus four times c plus one parenthesis there parenthesis there divided by there should be another parenthesis right here and that's what happens one parenthesis throws everything off control save we'll run it make sure it runs fine now the only difference between r1 here and r2 Where's our graphs? Thank you. The only difference between R1 and R2, we can just copy and paste it, is that one sign switches. So R2, oh, control B, sorry. R2 here just switches to, instead of this minus, this switches to a plus. And these are making our bounds for our polar coordinates. So this is a double integral finding a volume, right, in which we're restricted with polar coordinates. And then this G is kind of acting as like our Z value, right? our height. Okay, so we now can do our integral and you can break this up into a couple steps. I'm going to do one step, but feel free to reference the actual um, instructions. It breaks it up into multiple steps. So we'll say int g is going to be equal to, we'll do a double integral, int of int. Well, that's not going to work. Int of int. And we need to feed it a variable or a function, sorry, g. Uh, and we need to multiply by r. And the reason why we're multiplying by r is remember when we do a double integral with polar coordinates, dA is equal to r dr d theta, right? So we need that extra r here. Now we're going to be integrating with respect to r between r1 and r2. That's our first integral. Once we jump outside of that integral, we're going to be integrating again with respect to theta, all between 0 and 2 times pi. And I'll put a semicolon, control save. Now, I know I went through that very quickly. That does take care of 2D. Um, what we're actually going to do also is just call this P2D, and we're going to say VPA in case there's any rounding errors. Get out of here. In case there's any rounding errors, we'll just say VPA of int G. So hopefully this helps with 1D if anybody was stuck on 1D. So again, there's a little bit, a few pieces for you guys to go through. You still have to do 2C. There's a little bit of 2A to do. And a little bit of two, I think two B, we might have done the whole thing. All right, so if any questions, feel free to send me a message. Let me know. I'll be quick to respond. I do have limited internet access. I uh, hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving again, and I will see you when we get back. Thanks, everyone.